Welcome everyone. This is April Cox. I am an author and self-publishing coach and the creator of Self-Publishing Made Simple. Today we're going to walk through an introduction of what you can expect with the Self-Publishing Made Simple author work group. So for those of you who are unsure whether this is the right group for you or you're not you know not signed up yet but considering it that's exactly what I'm here to kind of go through an overview and give you a sense of what you can expect with the author work group I'm also going to be sending this link out to all those who have signed up just to give them a little bit of an intro as well um, I want to introduce my partner in crime Bobby Hinman. She and I have been running this work group and have put hundreds of people through it. It is amazing. Bobby, would you like to introduce yourself and then I can go into the presentation and we'll kind of play off of each other with that one. Okay. I am Bobby. I am the an author of five children's books, seven cookbooks, and a soon-to-be memoir about a ghost. I've been editing children's books for close to 10 years. I am here to help in any way I possibly can. I know there are times when you just see one little thing and you're not sure about it and you don't know whether to go forward with the writing process and you're stuck. You can always reach out to me. Uh, once I edit your story, I will just be there for you for the rest of your life, whether you want me to or not. <laughs> If you can, if you get stuck on something a year from now, you can call me and or email me and I'd be happy to help you. I will help you write your book summary and bio, which are very important to add to your book covers. Like April, we, you know, the two of us will hold your hand through the process. Thanks, Bobby. In the welcome email, when we when you sign up for the work group, um, I always recommend that students pick up the book and it's um, How to Create a Successful Children's Picture Book by none other than Bobby Hinman. She is uh, the author of that text, and that is actually the story about how we got started helping other people with the author journey. I actually reached out to Bobby. I think she was my fifth editor on my first picture book because I just felt like there was something missing with the story I don't know if it was just imposter syndrome or what it was, but I just didn't feel ready to publish my book. And I found Bobby. She came highly recommended from other authors. And as part, at the time, she was running a special on an edit plus the book um, that she created for how to publish, how to self-publish a children's book. So I got that book in the mail and it was like the sky opened and angels were singing. I was like, oh my God, this makes it so simple for me. I wish I had this six months ago. So because there were so many questions and so many things that I struggled with when I first got started. And so by having that book and seeing how, how much that helped me, and how much others were struggling with the same self-publishing process. Some time went by and then I reached out to, to Bobby and I said, hey, would you mind, I'm thinking about pulling a work group of authors together to help them with their questions. Would you mind if I used your book as like part of the framework that we're gonna go through? And she said, not only do I, am I okay with that, but I'll join you and, and help you and be there to answer questions. So that was almost, I think about two years ago, and we've been doing this ever since. And it has been very rewarding, amazing opportunity for us and also for uh, the authors that we have been serving. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to share a few slides. And I want you to go ahead and ask questions along the way. Again, this is the introduction to self-publishing made simple, author work group. The goal here for today 
is to provide an overview and ask and answer any questions that you have. So interrupt me as we go. Feel free to call out and if there's anything confusing, that's what I'm here for. Um, so we kind of already went through the introductions. I will talk a little bit about self-publishing made simple and uh, the curriculum, you know, how you can set yourself up for success and give do some FAQs. So here are is a little bit about my story. My books are little labradoodle books. I started the series as a help or a passion project that I launched with and for my grandkids based on some stories that I used to tell them and that we made up together. You can see my little mascot here. We love to go and visit preschools and here are some of the books and coloring books that have resulted in all of the the effort that I've been doing. I left corporate America after a 35 year career and took what I learned as a project manager, rolling out multi-million dollar projects, managing projects, and helping people who were non-techies to understand and walk through the process of these very large upgrades. So as a result, when I started doing self-publishing, I was able to kind of pull all of that experience and really immerse myself and was able to come up to speed very quickly with self-publishing. To make matters even better, <laughs> some would call it a stroke of bad luck when my company said that they no longer had my position available any longer. I was so grateful because I was so tired of, co of corporate America and I was in the middle of publishing my first book when they merged and my position was eliminated and I got the terrible news that I was going to get a year's salary as a severance and my position was gone. So I could have done cartwheels <laughs> at that point. I was so excited. I was going to get to focus for a full year on doing what I really love to do without pressure of trying to make ends meet. So I just focused on self-publishing. I taught others self-publishing. I found Bobby and, you know, I haven't looked back. We've, I've been now no longer get subsidized for my, uh, my work, but it has been just an amazing journey and I've loved every minute of it. So that's a little about me. So this kind of looked like me when I first got started with self-publishing. I had no clue where to begin and many of the authors that I coach come to me kind of looking this same way. And there is confusion and anxiety. Some of them unfortunately don't find me until after they have already spent thousands of dollars wasted months and months or even years trying to self-publish the book on their own. So this really is one of the reasons why I created this program was to serve the author community because for me it's really about making a difference and helping people who want to make their dream come true and who are stuck along the way. So what is Self-Publishing Made Simple? It's a group for new and aspiring authors and those who have published books but maybe feel that they have more to learn or would benefit from a community of like-minded authors. I actually have a number of people who are on their second or third book and they just keep joining my work group each 12-week session. For some, it's about reinforcing the knowledge that they learned. For others, it's about accountability. And some join because they love the sense of community. Self-publishing can be a very lonely process. And when you, you've got all this weight on yourself to try to figure things out, it's, um, it can be very difficult and anxiety-ridden. So with this type of community, when we are, you know, sharing struggles, sharing the wins, 
you know, showing, hey, look, this is my new, my new character design just came in, or hey, let me show what's going on with this brand new logo or my brand new, you know, Facebook page. So we're here and we build off of one another and this community supports one another. So quite often, by the time we get to the end of the work group, people just don't want to leave. So that's that's the biggest compliment that I could have. Let me talk a little bit about logistics. So it is January 14th starts the first group session. It's going to be Thursdays from 8 to about 9.30ish. The meeting will last about an hour and then I stay usually 30 to 60 minutes after the group for anybody that has questions or needs additional help. We have office hours on Tuesdays from 8 to 9, oh I'm sorry that should be 8 to 10 p.m. It's two hour, a two hour slot um, where I just basically show up with Zoom, on Zoom and whoever logs in and wants to get help on anything, um, we just go wherever the questions take us. So that is my way of making sure that people have an opportunity to get help when they need it. Now the audience, or I should say, you know, who's right for this? New and aspiring authors who are confused about self-publishing. Maybe you've tried to learn on your own and you're getting stuck and you need some help or you're running into some costly mistakes and you just need guidance from someone. Then you're in the right place with the self-publishing made simple author work group. As part of the work group, we provide tools and templates to help you move forward through the process we're going and here are just some of them every it seems like every work group we get more and more and more because we're developing new tools and incorporating feedback from authors like yourselves every time we run through one of these programs so the budget spreadsheet a checklist for self-publishing um, you'll get my author illustrator contract a resource list of trusted editors, illustrators, and designers to help format your book. I also have examples of an illustration brief that will help you be able to really work well with your illustrator. You'll get sample press kits and marketing plan, uh, mind maps that we use as we're starting to kind of uh, come up with a strategy and planning for your marketing efforts. There's a timeline and schedule that will help you stick to that 12-week plan. Keywords, categories, an influencer list of more than 700 influencers that you can reach out to that are children's book influencers. A list of printers. An, a list of awards that you, you know, if you want to know which ones are reputable and which ones that you um, should take advantage of. Uh, a list of promotional sites that you can use to post your uh, free promotions when you put your, your ebook for free. Um, so much stuff. And we will continue to develop and build this as we move forward with the self-publishing made simple program okay so some of the components that we are going to use during this 12-week process we've got the weekly meetings we talked about on Thursdays there's drop-in hours on Tuesdays and that's the office hours where you know it's optional if you don't need them or you know meeting two days a week is too much don't worry about it. It's for, you know, it's there if you need it. The tools and templates. I also have a component of one on one coaching, and I provide, along with this work group, you're going to get multiple one on one coaching sessions with me. I recommend that we do that before the group starts and then halfway through to check in on how things are going and then at the end of the group 
I'll also make myself available for a free one-on-one -on -one session to check in and make sure that you're getting every all of your questions answered. You're going to find a lot of expert guidance from authors that and resources that I bring in to talk about certain topics. For example, Bobby Hinman is talks about writing and editing and how how can your how can you ensure that you're writing it correctly? How do you, you know, how can you make sure that you're ready for the professional edit? What do you need to do? So these, you know, these are topics that you'll see Bobby covering. I also bring other experts to talk about marketing, social media. You know, as we move forward through things, I'll be bringing illustrators in, graphic designers, and we will talk about introduce topics to you. So it's not just me and Bobby. I want you to get expert advice from a number of individuals who have been through this process and you'll be exposed to other experts, not just myself and Bobby as well. We also have, I talk about video on demand. Basically what I mean is, even though uh, we are having live sessions, I am going to record every one and it will be available as video on demand if you are unable to attend and you wanna replay, or you did attend and you want to watch it again, it'll be there for you. I also have a lot of additional videos and other things on my YouTube channel, both public and private. So I make some additional private sessions available for people that are in my author work group. And so those links will be shared with you as we go through the process of the 12 weeks. If you have uh, already registered, you probably have received my email and an invite to a private Facebook group. That is also part of the 12 week session. We'll use that Facebook group and the learning units that are in there to communicate and to, to encourage one another as we go through the process when we're outside of our of our normal meeting hours. And of course, the community of other authors. So far, we have, I think, 20, over 20 people enrolled with a handful of others that have said that they would be signing up or are, are interested. And so we probably end up around 25 people going through this all uh, together each week. So that makes for takes a lonely process and turns it into a very supportive process with lots of people cheering and helping you to move forward, providing you feedback on things before you, you publish them. So take advantage of that amazing community that's out there. And here's just one example of the list of speakers that I have had coming in through the author work group. And this is kind of what you can expect moving forward. We have optional meetings that might be for, you know, only certain people might be interested in like Amazon ads or, but there's marketing professionals, people talking about school visits and how to create a marketing plan, how to get publicity for your books, social media, how to get the word out and make, sh you know, hit the pavement and you know, going, moving forward with your book so that you can get the word out personally. Where do you go? Who do you visit? What do you say? So there's lots of information that you're going to get, not only from me, but other speakers like this as well. And I do love to use mind maps. So I'll be sharing the mind maps on the different processes that we use to go through this. And as I'm going to go through this more simpler timeline here, as we start the beginning of the workshop, we've got the first few weeks really focused on planning and editing. So you're, you're coming in and your manuscript is complete. By the end of the first few weeks, we're hoping to have a finished professional edit. We're going to move forward with illustrations through 
uh, six weeks of illustrations. Now, of course, not everybody can get illustrations done in six weeks. So I will provide you with some tips about, you know, how to limit complexity and ensure that your illustrations will be able to be turned around in a, a quick timeline here in order to, mit, to meet the 12 weeks. Now, if you do not care whether you meet 12 weeks or not, if you've got detailed illustrations and you want to move forward and you know that your illustrations maybe it'll take three months instead of six weeks, then you will have the opportunity to just extend that. You don't have to stick to this exact timeline, but I wanted to give you a map of what a 12 week process might look like for those who are participating and wanting to get through it in the 12 week period. So you can see some of the uh, different activities that we'll be moving forward with during that time. When we get to the end of illustrations, we've got design and that's, you know, the graphic designer taking what the illustrator gave plus what you have given on your manuscript and laying out that beautiful book for you and then out the outcome of your graphic design and layout is your formatted files that you will then use to publish your book whether you're uploading it to Amazon sending it off to a printer Ingram Spark all of those different uh, options are available to you and at the very bottom we've got this red arrow from beginning to end there is a lot of marketing that goes in and we will touch on it for every period that we go through we're going to continue to say now at about this time you should be doing X for example early on in the process you'll want to create a press kit which will go into the different aspects of a press kit, what you need it for. You will want to be doing a launch team and planning for a launch team, planning for pre-orders, and continuing each step of the way in the 12-week process, you'll have marketing activities that we will continue to move forward and help you with as we, move, as we do move through from beginning to end of the 12-week session. Okay, so now I want to talk about how can you be sure to be successful with the self-publishing made simple 12 week author work group. So number one is consistent participation. I have had a number of people who thought, yes, I want to do this um, and they didn't attend meetings and they promised themselves they would watch the replays. They didn't participate uh, or do the assignments or maybe they didn't buy the book I would just say as long as you are really interested in doing this hold yourself accountable to stick with the class if you fall behind reach out and let me know if there's anything that I can do um, you know life happens and we have to sometimes make adjustments but in order to be successful there are some things that you're just going to have to do in order to be able to keep up with the class I would recommend giving yourself you know four hours to six hours a week dedicated to this and that means including the, the time that you're spending with me um, make sure that you've got time to do some reading and to do some other things like planning and you know putting marketing things together for yourself again don't feel shy about reaching out and um, asking for help I'm I'm there before every meeting I'm there after every meeting I have a two-hour session where you can drop in and attend office hours if none of these time slots work for you and you happen to be one of those people that just says you know I'm going to I'm in a different time zone I want to do this work group and I will just watch the replays but you need that one you know that connection and that mentoring 
I will make special arrangements for you and I will um, do more mentoring if need be so that you get the connection and the help that you need. But you just need to be willing to raise your hand and say, hey, this isn't working for me. I just need some additional support because that's what I'm here for. Bobby's here for. And we have some others who've been through the group um, a number of times that have volunteered also to be mentors to those that need extra help. But April, one thing I have to throw in is that you tend to be available in the middle of the night, but don't call me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I do make myself available at all crazy hours. I tend to work with um, with illustrators and my designers are in the Philippines. I have illustrators in India, Indonesia, uh, Philippines, some in the U.S. So my I do have some I do keep some crazy hours. If you're looking for a, an early morning meeting, I'm not your gal. <laughs> Cuz if I'm up <laughs> call Bobby if it's an early morning thing, but um yeah, if I'm up at 7 a.m., it's probably because I haven't been to bed yet. <laughs> so, but we will work to get you the help we need that you need. Um you'll have my email address. Um, you've got the Facebook group, tag us, you know, with questions. And you've got other authors who are going through this with you. They all come with at different experience levels. And the group really does a great job supporting one another. So take advantage of that as well. So here are some common fears and doubts that uh, that keep other people from finishing their book or even just starting or signing up for a group like this, they're afraid of that it's too complex and they're not sure they're going to be able to finish. They have misconceptions about self-publishing. They've heard bad things about it or, you know, that it's low quality. Or, or some, some are concerned, you know, who am I to, to publish a book? Is my book even good enough? Is this going to cost too much money? Am I going to ever make any sales? These things are completely natural, and we're going to go through every step of this. We're going to answer a lot of these questions along the way. But yes, you can do it. Your, your story needs to be out in the world, and you're the only one that can tell it. So don't let these kinds of limiting fears and doubts keep you from doing something that will uh, be so important and, and make a difference not only for you, but for others who are going to read your story. I've self-published self before, and yes, it was a quite, quite a feat. Um, Bobby's helping me with um, my new series already. Mm -hmm. If I have more than one manuscript already in the works and it's going to be a, you know, a series. Do you suggest that, you know, we put more than one book on the line here or do we just do one at a time? I have seen people do both. Um, in some cases, they want to move the whole series through and finish and get to the end and then launch the whole series like uh, what they call rapid release. So that is an option. Of course, um, if you're doing a picture book, it might be a little tricky if you're illustrating with different illustrators um, or if you're going with one firm to do the illustrations, it can be taxing to get through that all at once. Bobby, do you have any suggestions? Um, yeah, I, I haven't had tremendous luck with people who are rushing it through because it becomes a rush. And sometimes something is sacrificed along the way. Mm -hmm. I personally prefer to put my heart and soul one in. One at a time. One, yeah. Right, get that one. If you want to hold that one when you're finished and then release it with a second one, that's different. But I think... The process works better if you can just concentrate on one. 
Yeah. And I just want to add one more thing. The way the timeline is here is beautiful. And take a look at where it says professional edit, because that comes generally before the illustration. Yes. It's really important. It's really hard in the editing process, if you need, if something needs to be rearranged and you already have your illustrations, you can, you can be stuck. And sometimes it's hard to rework the story around the illustrations. So it's better to have it edited and know that the order of everything in your manuscript, and then you have that to take to the editor. I mean, to the uh, illustrator. And then you don't have to worry about changing it afterwards midstream because illustrators are not too happy when you say, you know, I don't think that illustration is going to work anymore. Let's do something else instead. Yeah. It's not fair to them either. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me, this is Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, I was wondering um, <laughs> when you were when uh, Bobby was saying about um, the pictures and the illustrations going together. Uh, I, well, I have my book already illustrated, and um, he sent it. Uh, he gave and he sent it back to me, and he said it's an edit form. But I am not able to. I haven't been able to find the one where I can go into it and like make corrections in my um in the in the text. So my question is, do I have to go back to him to, um, to try to um, fix it? Or will you be able to help me with that? So it sounds to me, just let me um, make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. So your illustrator um, has been sending you things and you're having trouble um, under, uh, getting to it and understanding what to do with that information what, that he's sending. Is that right? Uh, not 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 correct. Um, no. Um, what I'm saying is that, well, I'm fi he's finished with his job, the illustrating. He's finished it. He sent me like JPEGs, you know, like um the edited the um complete version of the book. Okay. Um, I still have to do my uh, bio on it. But everything else, the cover is done, and I um, but I but then when I was reading, I saw like I had a run on sentence. And I wanted to correct that. But I know when I was trying to go back to find a version where I could correct it, I wasn't able to find it. Yeah, it sounds to me, and this is common, it sounds to me that he's like he sent you the finished files and not the source files so that you can get in and modify them. Uh, whether you take the files or you work with a graphic designer, which is what I highly recommend, um, to make the updates and to, to format the files so that they're ready to upload, um, then I would recommend that um, you request those. And if you put some time um, on my calendar, I'll talk through it with you and give you some verbiage you can use with your, your illustrator that can help you make sure you that he understands exactly what you need, which is the open source files, so that you can, so that you can get in, update those, or so your your graphic designer can, and we can get that formatting done so that you can get those finished files to upload. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Hi, April. Carrie Ann here. I'd like to also jump on. Hi, I'd like to also jump on a call with you, if possible. Oh, to absolutely. Speak about getting that open source file from um, the Illustrator. Yes. Um, my question, though, is in relation to the illustration. What is the delivery of source code? Yeah. So we. Um, what I do at the beginning of all of this, and it might be too late for you, but I have a, a template, a contract template that I share with all of my students. It is for uh, the illust author illustrator contract. And I always recommend to you get a work for hire contract. And in that contract, it says that the illustrator is going to be delivering source files to you which is 
if they use Photoshop, then it's the Photoshop files. If they're using Illustrator, it's Illustrator files. If it's a hand-drawn artwork, then it's scanned files um, that, you know, sometimes they'll take it to a printer nearby and have them scanned in digital high quality. And so what you need is those source files. You don't need just JPEGs that have flattened um, the flattened files because that's not going to help you. It needs they need to be high resolution. And the other thing that I always request from the Illustrator is that they leave the layers intact. For example, if there's a layer for an animal, there's a background layer. There's multiple characters. Usually they're in separate layers on Photoshop. We want them to give us the file with the layers intact instead of flattening it all into one layer and then sending the file. And the reason why that's important is because the graphic designer, um, if they need to move something away from the gutter, or they need to make, make some room for words, they can shrink things up and move things around if the layers are intact. If they're not, then there, it's, a very, it's much more difficult for the graphic designer to lay out the book so that it's perfect when they export it to your finished files. And April, one more thing I wanna throw in there. It's unusual for the illustrator to be the one to set the text. It's generally the graphic yeah. designer after the illustrations are completed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it more and more where the illustrators, uh, where a lot of authors that I'm working with recently especially, have been saying, my illustrator is going to do the layout for me. Um, I, I know that there are illustrators that out there that do have design abilities as well, but they are very few and far between. The ones... Uh, illustrators are really good at drawing and creativity and design of of the images right the beautiful artwork they're not very good typically I would say eight out of ten times that I've seen this they're not good at all at all and the other two times you know one out of two will be decent the other one is perfect so, you know, it's one out of 10. <laughs> I would definitely recommend that you move forward with a graphic designer because they know how to, what's important for your book to be printed in the number of different formats, whether you're going with an ebook format, you're going with paperback on, you know, print on demand or um, print on demand for hardcover. There's lots of different formats and requirements um, that the illustrator is not going to really understand. And there's nuances that a, only a graphic designer will do well because they, that's all they do is format the book for you to go live with your printer or with your, um, you know, KDP, Amazon, um, Ingram Spark. So let them do what they do best you'll get the very best work doing it that way. Hey, so um, April, I'm just going to barge in here. But but the the book design and formatting, they, we shouldn't obtain a graphic designer until after we have all the sketches so and the coloring done. Not exactly. I'm, I'm doing, I'm giving the high level look here. Um, and because I didn't want to get into the details and make oh. you guys crazy, <clears throat> but what I'm, I'll go backwards one. And if you look at design, you can see that about, you know, we're, this is one week at a time. You'll see that the graphic designer gets involved early on with the illustrator, helping create a nice template, taking their storyboards and putting, you know, working with them to get, make sure that there's plenty of room for your, your words and your pictures. Um, and then they'll also do layout and exporting of the files here as well. Okay, 
That makes sense. Uh, Thank you. So it's, so it's not too late then, is it, for um, the corrections that, that's needed? No, it's not too late. I mean, sometimes things aren't done in the perfect order. And we do address that when it happens. And we, if we have to take a step back and tweak some layouts, then as long as we can get those source files, the, the uh, graphic designers, formatters, will be able to work with that and make sure to move forward with you. Okay, thank you. So another question that just got posted, does the graphic designer suggest a font for your cover and inside? So yes, um, but they also provide you with the opportunity to kind of choose from a list of common fonts. Um, we might get together the way that I typically um, work with my graphic designer is she has a list of recommended fonts for children's books, covers and interiors, and she'll ask the author to pick a few of their favorites. And then she'll work up a, a couple of pages with the different fonts so that you can see how they'll look. And of course, the decision is up to the author, but with recommendation from the graphic designer on what looks nice and what will, what will look well uh, for the finished product. Okay. One question uh, before you move on, April. Mm -hmm. Read the editing. Um, what's the process of, you know, there's a quotation in my book um, that I took from, from somebody, a famous quote. So I wanted to find out um, what's the process of getting approved for using someone else's um, words. And also, if I paraphrase that, if that would be okay. Bobby, would you mind commenting on that one? Yes. Generally, you need to give, all the, I would say all the time, you need to give credit to the um, originator of whatever you're putting in. Now, it used to be fancy footnoting, but now it seems to be the trend that if you just give credit to the person, you can say, as Albert Einstein said, da 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 da, or you can put the quote and then underneath say, um, credited to or said by or quoted, I'm quoting so and so. There are different ways to word. And if it's in the middle of a story, then you need to put an asterisk and then put it down at the bottom and put a little bit of credit but just just give credit to people if you can um contact the person and say you know do i have the your permission to use this that's always fine but generally you just need to give them credit okay great because it it's one of those famous quotes that has like almost the effect of don't underestimate what a small group of people can do and mm -hmm. that was said by Margaret Mead. So I did put her name, put the quote, and okay. then I had her name. Mm -hmm. um, but then one editor told me that I should make sure that um, this copyrighted content is okay before I put it in the book. So I just wanted to get a second opinion mm -hmm. about how to do that. So yeah, generally, you, you just if you give them credit, then they're happy. I mean, why would somebody complain if you're giving them credit? Okay, awesome, perfect. Thank I quote you so Dr. Much. I quote Dr. Seuss all over my book. <laughs> oh, okay, great. So. Save me the headache of having to reach out to these people who probably won't read the email anyways. Right. And if it's just one line, you're not copying pages and pages of text from somebody. It's just one no. line. There's their right. name. They should, I'm happy if somebody quotes me and puts my name someplace. Awesome. If you great. want to Thank quote me, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I do great. have a famous quote that somebody's going to use one day, and that is, don't fall in love with your words. <laughs> I will definitely use that when I put my book together for you, Dar for right. you. <laughs> oh. And usually it, after you say that, it says, you say, April. <laughs> April, don't fall in love with the words. <laughs> no, I've, I've said it to a lot of people. 
Yeah. Awesome. There's always another word that we can use. Don't go yes. up with these. <laughs> All right. So um, I see Andrea's with us and Andrea posted a question. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, she says, my book is with an editor already. Do you suggest a start with a different new story for the course? So my answer to that is not necessarily. Um, just because your book is with an editor right now, that's still uh, a small part of the process. You might be... Okay. A little bit ahead of the game because you know normally maybe they're not moving into editing until week two or three but that still gives you plenty of time to catch to do other things that you need to like focus on strategy and planning um, your marketing plan there's lots of things that you're gonna need to do you'll be glad to be a little bit of ahead and not necessarily need to start with a different book okay thank you you're welcome. I've had some people go through this course in um, less than 12 weeks because, you know, they were just so ready and they had already picked, you know, selected their, their editor and they were able to move forward so efficiently. They connected well with their illustrator and their illustrations were relatively simple. Um, but, I mean, so far... I think the um, all-time record to go through from beginning to end is somewhere around seven weeks, which is pretty amazing considering it was a uh, an eight-year-old girl that we had in our last session who um, luckily Bobby and I, you know, teamed up together. I helped manage the project through and uh, yeah, she was done um, in record time. And we've had a few others that got done around eight weeks. We've had others who have, it's taken longer than the 12 weeks. It really just depends on a number of things like your illustrations, which is going to be the long pole <laughs> in the mm -hmm. tent, right? <laughs> because if you have really detailed illustrations, there's not, there's probably no way that that's going to get done in six weeks. So, you know, you can, we can ensure that you get all of the knowledge that you need. And then that's also why I connect with everybody at the end of the work group to see how best I can support their efforts moving forward, whether that means continuing with the publishing or moving on to Amazon ads or other things that they're doing now that their book is published. Thank you. I think this is, this is so helpful because obviously not having this information i was all over the place of what i was doing oh yes what yes. order it should yes. be done so good um, so thank yes. you <laughs> mm. good yeah so by giving you this framework and all the tools that you need and the support you need each week moving forward it it does really take a lot of the guesswork out of it and we just keep improving um it's not that you know, you must follow these exact steps to get to success, but having that framework really makes a difference. All right. Um, last time that we had met, there was um, you, a group of people that you worked with in the Philippines. What, what service was that in regards to? Was that printing books? Uh, for the Philippines, no, there's a, a design team that I work with, a graphic design team. So that list of um, editors, illustrators, and these are the, the group in the Philippine is a group of graphic designers. Um, so they are on the list and they are my, the personal go-tos that I, that I use. Um, we have about, I think we have three or four reporting to Praise Saffler, who is my primary graphic designer for myself as well. So you will have an opportunity to choose from them and some others that are also on the list. But I want to also mention that while I give you access to my vast network of proven resources, there you are more than welcome to go out and find your own if you prefer. I just, because I had so many authors coming to me saying, I don't know who to work with, or they would select somebody off of Fiverr or Upwork, and then they were miserable because they had no idea that this person was not trustworthy. 
So I, did, I put it on myself to create that list and to share my network with you all. Um, but it, again, it is for your use if you want it or need it. Otherwise, we could use your own resources as well. Um, I heard you, uh, this is Mary, and I, I heard you uh, mention Ingram Sparks. Is that the only um, publishing company that you use? No. Um, so we use, um, what, or let's just say as part of this process, we do focus on print on demand and being able to allow you to help understand how to load, how to take advantage of Amazon's print on demand service. So that will be ebook and um, paperback. I also know that Amazon is also beta testing hardcovers. So I don't know when that will become available. But it is eventually when that is available, we will also be there. You know, we'll also test that ability as well. Ingram Spark has the uh, additional benefit of doing hardcover print on demand. So you can move forward with not just a paperback, but you can do a hardcover. So I recommend that you actually use both. Ingram Spark and Amazon because they both have their um, benefits. Ingram Spark has a broader range of distribution that you'll get into Barnes and Noble on their website. They, you know, there are thousands of retailers, libraries, um, and um, bookstores that get this feed from Ingram Spark and some will only buy from Ingram Spark. So you want to have them in your solution toolbox. Um, however, Amazon also has one of the biggest information superhighways out there. And you know, you could advertise on Facebook or or you know, post to your own website, but you're not gonna get the kind of traffic and attention and warmed up traffic all looking to buy something as you will on Amazon. So make the best of both of those is my recommendation. And we'll go over that as we talk through some of these solutions along the way. And if you want to do bulk printing, you can still do bulk printing instead of print on demand. And we go through that as well and share some of our favorite proven printers both in the US and in China so that you can get the best possible price for your books. Okay, I just that I've, I've, I've been like uh, researching them and I, I see that Ingram Sparks, a lot of people go say Ingram Sparks, but then they say that um, it's hard once you um, send your book to them and it's they charge every time they have to make a correction mm -hmm. um, and that it's um, hard to get in contact with them. Now, I mean, like, and so I just really haven't heard, like, much positive about them. Yeah, they are. Um, Amazon and Ingram Spark both have their challenges with support. Um, I've been doing this for so long that I think I could do a lot of these I've probably ran into every single error message and things that that I can come up with and don't often need to to resort to support but when I do there are some tricks to getting the attention you need and sometimes it's not necessarily that they don't do a good job supporting us as we don't know what we want or need and so it takes them time to figure it out and to and yes, you know, they do get busy and sometimes you might wait, you know, a few days before you get an answer to a question. Hopefully, the fact that I'll be there, um, Bobby will be there and others who've been through this before are also there to help mentor and help you move forward. You won't get stuck or or have issues with Ingram Spark as some of the other people that are getting totally frustrated out there by themselves. All right, okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Mm -hmm. April, one quick question from me though. Karen here again. Um, I think my not so strong point is giving great artistic direction as to what the illustration should be. Okay. Um, yes. Is there like a person who provides um, artistic direction, you know, throughout this process that you are mentioning? Is there such a person? Or yeah. So we're going to talk about the process of illustrations and what you can do and what and I have some templates that I'll share with you to help you um, provide the best possible information for your illustrators. Um, Bobby or your editor that you choose also can help you as far as laying out the book as to like what text appears on what pages and can also give you some ideas on on some potential options for illustration and then um, coming up with samples uh, we we fill out what we call an illustration brief that allows us to talk through you know what are you looking for what what types of information um, can you provide ahead of time to your illustrator including reference images because when you give them the more information you give them about your character, about the settings, or what you see in your head, um, the better chance that you have of, of being satisfied with what they give back to you. So my hope is that with the templates and tools that we share with you and the process we outline, that you'll be able to have a really good exchange with your illustrator and and also recommend I also recommend that you leave room for them to do some creativity you know leave them some creativity that's what they do best when I was going through my most recent book there were a few pages worth of like where I was completely clueless what to do with the illustration on those pages and I just wrote to my illustrator on the brief no idea what to do with this illustration, use your imagination. And those are the pages that I love the most out of my new book. So sometimes I have to remind myself to get out of my head and to trust the process with the illustrator because they do so much better than I can envision myself. That's, mm -hmm. their, that's their expertise. Ideally you want feedback back and forth with your illustrator. You want one that you can work with. And I found that it's best to go in with the ideas already laid out and say to the illustrator, this is what I'm picturing for each one of my pages. What do you think? And go back and forth with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the services that I do, I sh should really stop because it takes so much time, but I keep doing this for people because I can't stop. When I edit, if I edit your story, I will do the page breaks and I will make a suggestion for each illustration. And it's something that you can start with. You may have your own ideas, but it's something that you can start with and, and build on. And the, if it's a picture book, the illustrations need to tell half of the story. Mm -hmm. So you want to think in terms of the characters doing something, something happening on each page that gives the story momentum and moves it forward. If you are just illustrating a person standing there and telling a story, it, the illustrations aren't working for you. So they really have to work hand in hand. And that's that's why I'm, I'm willing to you know, take some extra time and give you suggestions for each one. Sometimes you just need to add more action to the story. You know, if you get to a place where there's nothing to illustrate, sometimes it means there's nothing happening. So maybe a little bit more dialogue added to the story will perk it up and give you something to put on that page. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. I'm also resharing this um, illustration, uh, this timeline here, because as we look at the illustration process, um, we're creating an illustration brief. We're we're sharing, you know, we're finalizing the contract with the illustrator. 
we're doing cover design, we're doing storyboards. Now a storyboard is is very rough sketches that take all, you know, from beginning to end, what is your story going to look like? And there's a lot of back and forth that happens during that time so that everybody can get on the same page with how things are going to flow. And then when the storyboard is is finalized, it's time to move forward with sketches. And you'll have opportunities as the illustrator goes back and forth with you and gives you delivers some sketches you'll be able to talk through some tweaking that you'd like out of those sketches. Ultimately, you want to get all of your changes and, in, and things incorporated before you move into approving them to color the illustrations. Because once you get into coloring, it's much more expensive to undo and redo everything from the ground up. So. Um, that's part of what we'll go over when we talk about the illustration process. It is very collaborative and if you find yourself running into issues with the illustrator or going through this process because it's going to be brand new for you, um, you, you know, I'll be there to support your efforts and many of the illustrators, if, you know, whether I've worked with them or not, um, I have no problem joining you and kind of helping to work through if the two of you get stuck uh, or get to an impasse and you need some help moving forward. The majority of the illustrators that are used in, in my work groups, I've already worked with them. And so it's very easy for me to pick up and, and let them know, hey, I need your help with this. We need to move this forward. What can we do to rectify this situation? And I bring a lot of business to these illustrators with my work groups. So I'm usually able to move things forward when an, an individual author cannot. So mm -hmm. I'll be there to support those efforts with you as well. It's also all laid out in my book with examples of, of the storyboards yes. and the different steps yes. of the illustration process. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, this is Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Hi. how are you? My book is already with the graphic designer. So I guess, um, would you recommend that I just rather do one-on-one -on -one coaching than going through the whole, you know, almost nine weeks before I get to the point? Because right now I'm working on my imprint name and then I'm right. ready to publish, but I don't, yes. I don't know anything about that yet. Yes, I'm happy to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with you and put, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what, what needs to happen with your, um, from where you are to published and then after. So things like, what do you need to do to get some good keywords, categories, um, make sure your book is in multiple categories so that you can get that bestseller badge. What do we need to do to advertise your book so that right. we can keep it selling? Do you need to pre-launch pre-orders, you know, launch team? But there's a lot that goes into from where you are right now no. to actually launching your book. And I am happy to work one-on-one -on -one with you if you'd like that. Um, I do have a link that I posted in the chat with a link to my calendar. So grab a free 30 minute um, consult with me and I'll be glad to just answer some questions and help guide you on what we can do and which services maybe would be appropriate for you. Great, because I eventually want to write a new book, but I have to finish this is my first one. I have to finish this first. <laughs> of I'm course. not ready yet for a new one. So, yeah. okay, so I'll, I'll look for that link and then I just email you. Okay, I'll post it again here. Um, it's my calend Calendly um, free consult. There you go. So Lisa's asking, should we begin looking for an illustrator ASAP? So I would say it cannot hurt for you to start putting feelers out there. Um, I do have a list of illustrators that I will be sharing. You will have access to all of that information. You're welcome to use my list or to go and reach out and find another illustrator. The process that I typically recommend is to start with samples. 
to choose three illustrators and, and create a sample, something that's really important to you. For example, for me, it was how well this illustrator that I was going to go with was going to create my character. Like my main character was really important to me. So I took some pictures of samples of Labradoodles. I did, you know, have the color. I talked a little bit, you know, summarized what the book was going to be like, uh, summarized information about my character. You know, what kind of personality does that character have? What color eyes, color hair? And then what's the scene that you're asking them to give you a sample of? And all of the illustrators that are on my approved list that I'm, I'm giving out have all agreed, number one, to work for as a work for hire. That means that they, they're going to sign the sample contract without any issues that I give you. They're also going to, they've promised to provide samples at $50. So for $150, you'll have three examples from three different illustrators. And they also have agreed that at the end of the project to give you the source code, they know exactly what I want, and they know exactly what they know that they're transferring all of the licenses. You own the copyright to all of the images and you get all their source files. So those are the kinds of things I look for when I'm adding new illustrators to the mix. And so if you're out looking for your own illustrator, I would ask them, will, are they willing to do a work for hire contract? And that means you own the license to the images when they're done. It also means that you don't have to pay them royalties. And so there's some things that you can do to just vet them and make sure that everything is, is going to be okay. Now as a new author, you're new to all this, I would highly recommend getting an experienced illustrator and especially one that has gone through this with other members of my work group as well. Sorry, April, did you say that comes, you give that out at the beginning of the course? Yep, yep. Okay. I will have, when, when we start on Thursday, I'm going to go through um, an overview of the resources where you can find the templates and the contract, the list of illustrators, editors. So you're going to have plenty to be able to start reaching out and, and building your team. That's going to be one of the, the first things that we'll get started with. And it's Thursday at what time? It's Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And this is for the author work group. So if you are someone that is signed up for the 12-week group, it'll be 8 p.m to about 9.30 Eastern on Thursday. If you're not in the group, but you really would love to get some of these resources, just get on my calendar. We'll talk through how I can help. And I'm always happy to share that those kind of resources with people that I work with. So you're not, you know, it's not exclusive only for the author work group. I will help you get, get some of this done as well. How much is the class? The class is $3.99 for 12 weeks. I'm going to put a link to the work group for anyone who has not signed up and would like to. It is thelittlelabradoodle.com, that's my website, slash author dash work group. So you can click on that and, and get more details on the, the work group if you'd like. Bobby Hinman's contact. Uh, email is fairybooklady at gmail.com and m for myself it's april at the little labradoodle i'm adding that to the chat here for you and you could so you can feel free to reach out directly if you uh, to either one of us if you'd like to move forward and again you can grab time on my calendar uh, for a free 30 minute consult it's it's a no you know, no selling, no pressure. I'm just there to answer questions. And if you want 
information about how to work uh, with me on other services, I'm happy to do that. Um, but the consult is something that I do for any new author that needs help. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited about the author work group. Feel free to reach out to me by email or, um, or Bobby if you need any additional help. And have a wonderful evening, everyone. Mm -hmm.